When creating a three-dimensional file, one of the first things you have to be careful about is the seed file you use. So let's go up to the word file, move your cursor up there, press the left mouse button to pull down the options, and select the word new. Now here's a dialog box that basically tells you what directory you're going to create the file. This is going to be your file name. It's going to put the DGN extension on it, which is the default extension for MicroStation. But here is the template file you want to use, or the, what we call the seed file. If you press the seed button here, you notice in here that there are a lot of different files here, all under the WS mod, which stands for Workspace Modules. This is the default one, and is stored in a subdirectory called seed. And notice that if we up, press the up arrow, you'll see a barrage of files that has a 2D or 3D uh, part of their name which indicates that that will create a two-dimensional file or a 3D. So an example, let's just select a generic one that I just created here called file3d.dgn. Did OK. And I want you to take a look down in here once, once we press the OK. Now again, you're selecting a template. So here we have a file 3D. Let's go ahead and create a test file. Student Enter and notice that it actually created the file. Now the important thing to realize that we are now inside a three-dimensional cube. If we were to put a dot or a line at every addressable point, there would be 4.29 billion along the X, 4.29 billion along the Y, and 4.2 billion along the Z value of coordinates that we can address, or points by which we can attach our elements. So we do have a very massive uh, three-dimensional design plane or design file, I should say, and a three-dimensional cube is the best description of that. Now these elements you see here are nothing more than construction elements that can be turned off or very easily. We can select the word edit, select all. The handles will appear on everything and we can hit the delete tool to delete it all. And then of course we can refresh the screen. Now what is important is that we all realize that when we are doing something like this, we're getting rid of some elements here, not necessarily the, fast, the best way. But again, if we have taken this out of the seed file, then when we've created the, the uh, new file, it would not have allowed uh, or created the actual cubes there. So it's important that we realize that when we're dealing with the 3D file, that we want to be able to set the template. Now the next thing I want to show you is the fact that every window has a name to it. View 1 is top, view 2 is isometric, view 3 is front, and view 4 is right. So remember, when we're dealing with a three-dimensional world, we do have predefined uh, screen locations. Again, we could always switch this by selecting the word view. We could select the word rotation. And once we select the word rotation, we can pick which one we want. So if I want to look at the bottom, I touch the view. And even though I have no objects here, notice that it switches to the word bottom. And we'll be covering that when we talk about 3D view commands in MicroStation. So again, we just created a three-dimensional three file by going up to the word File New. Now let's open up a two-dimensional file and show how we can convert that to a 3D file. Let's go find a file. We call it New 2D. Let's press OK. <coughs> Excuse me. And now what we want to do is we want to show you how we can convert a two-dimensional file into a 3D drawing. So in this case here, let's go, go ahead and put in a couple of circles. And notice that what I'm doing is I'm locating my cursor and I'm touching my left mouse button. Again, that's my data button. To end this, I touch the right mouse button, which is my reset. And my circles basically are done. I'm not creating anymore. Now let's go ahead and convert this into a 3D file. We go up to the word File, we come down to Export, and we select 3D. Now the important thing is it's going to want to know from the bottom up here, it's going to want to know, first of all, what's the view orientation? I want this to be my top view, but if I needed that to be a front view or some of the other views here, we simply select from this pick list, and I'm picking this list with my left mouse button. So we select it back to top, and we're basically saying, I need this here to be the top view. Now we want the Z to be fixed, so we want the Z here to be zero. 
This fixed value is where in the Z depth would you like the object converted into 3D? Well, we want that to intersect the Z, the Z plane or the zero plane of the Z axis. And of course, if we had reference files, we can convert them as well. Now, we want to be able to control the directory this goes into. Right now, it's going to the microstation or ustation out directory, DGN. But if you double tap these two dots here, every time you double tap, it's like tapping in CD space dot dot. I want to move it back to DGN, and we'll select a subdirectory called bootcamp. And now what we're going to do is we're going to type in the command with the name of the file. So we're going to say nu3d for uh, the name of being the file for new vision 3D. We type that in. Now it's not necessary when we type this in uh, for us to go ahead and put in the DGN subdirectory or the th uh, DGN extension. So again, MicroStation will automatically add this in here. So again, you're going to type in the nu. 3D or whatever name you, you particularly need. Now once once it once you type in the, uh, type that in, remember you have to make sure that you are controlling what directory you want it to go to. Your source directory is the design file. You want that to be the top view. We want the Z depths to be fixed and at the zero value, and we want no uh, reference files converted at the same time. So once this is set and you provide the name, we can go ahead and send this out and convert this into a 3D file. So let's go ahead and just type in nu3d and we'll put in .dgn. Do an enter. Now it's going to start processing and up in here it's going to tell you that 31 elements were converted successfully. So let's open it. We do a file, we do open, and of course here's the nu3d.dgn. Press the OK. And notice now we've created a 3D file. So how do you know it's 3D? Well, first of all, look at view one. It now says that view one is, no, is top view, which is what we wanted. And if we open up a couple of other views, let's go ahead and select with the left mouse button, view, open, close, and select dialog. And now we can click on the various views. So in this case, we clicked on view number two to be turned on. Let's select view, rotation, and isometric and touch this view here. Notice now it's going to say isometric and all we have to do is fit this view here and notice that our circles are coming in in an angle. So we ha were able to successfully create a 3D file uh, out of a 2D file. So when we convert or we export a 2D file into 3D basically we're maintaining the same elements but we've opened up the Z depth so now you can draw into the 3D world.